Before anybody suggests you should buy life insurance, watch this video. Here are five dangers of buying life insurance. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, and welcome to another episode here on the Seven Figure Squad. So here are five dangers of buying life insurance, so let's get right into it. So number one, monthly premiums. Yes, life insurance is not free. There is a cost. So for example, if you are being quoted life insurance, of course you're gonna have monthly premiums. Sometimes it's cheaper for some life insurance companies to quote you a life insurance policy instead of paying for it monthly, you paid for it annually. Again, what's affordable for you, what better fits you, it's your suggestion and your decision. By the way, why do I pay 14 bucks a month or 15 bucks a month for IG to verify blue check my page? For me, this is some form of insurance. I feel a little bit better knowing that my followers aren't gonna be scanned by fake profiles to get them into these other things. So therefore, if you look at the cost of premium for me to protect my followers, to protect my brand. 13 and 15 bucks, what does that get you with life insurance? Let's take a look at this Forbes article. Life insurance costs an average of $13 a month or $159 a year for a 20 year, $250,000 term life insurance policy for a man age 30 and $12 a month for a woman age 30 based on Forbes advisor analysis. So to summarize for a male and female, man and woman, 12 to 13 bucks a month, gets them a 20 year life insurance policy for 20 years coverage that if anything were to happen to them, 12 to 13 bucks a month in exchange for a $250,000 check. And according to section 101A of the IRS code, death benefit proceeds from a life insurance policy are tax free. Done. The danger is whether or not you decide to invest 12, 13, 14, 15 bucks, whatever that monthly amount is quoted by your life insurance agent, you have to ask yourself is, am I better with it or am I, am I more financially dangerous without it? Let's move on to number two. Exclusions and limitations. If you're applying for a life insurance policy, oftentimes people don't know what they're buying. Figure out what it is that you're buying. Sometimes people are confused between credit life, disability, uh, critical, uh, cancer, in other words, people think that they have these life insurance policies, they're paying on a monthly basis. Oh, it's so cheap, so inexpensive. They get confused with this uh, point number one. And next thing you know, they die and their whole family thinks that they have a life insurance policy when the only way this life insurance policy pays out is through an accidental coverage, meaning that they have to die in an accident in order for the life insurance policy to pay out. Some tragedy has to happen in your life in order for that policy, an accidental death and dismemberment type of policy ever pays out. So think about this. If you know how you're going to pass away, well, then get that type of policy. If you don't, you want to get a policy that covers your entire life, no matter what happens to you. So those are some things that to consider a danger of, if you're buying a policy and it's not what you think it is, ask questions and make sure you know what it is that you are buying. Some people also have pre-existing conditions, well, I'll cover here in a second, but people have pre-existing conditions. Then the life insurance policy said, if you do this and you die, we can exclude ourselves from having to pay you. Okay? So in other words, there's some pre-existing conditions. So if you hear rumors around the block that saying people are saying, you know what, I bought life insurance. I paid the premium. And then when something happened to my loved one, the insurance company didn't pay. And that's a scam, okay? Well, what's the rest of the story? The rest of the story is they didn't disclose a certain limitation or they excluded a certain aspect of their life of what they have to do on a daily basis to avoid that type of death in order for the insurance company to pay out. These are inside the policy. So again, understanding your policy, understanding your contract, and understand what policy you have. By the way, if you want to have a complete breakdown of it, watch this video right here, where I explain the different types of life insurance that millionaires love to buy and a lot of in order to create generational wealth. All right, so let's go on to the third danger. You have a policy, and they seem to find out the policy's canceled because maybe somebody didn't pay the premium. And if you don't pay the premium, there's no coverage. Let me unpack this. If you think you have a policy, make sure the policy is enforced. I can't tell you how many times in my career where people thought they have a policy, they fall into the dangers, <clears throat> somebody got the policy, and guess what, they forgot to pay it. They may have had a policy, correct, but it wasn't enforced. The other danger is, people think that surrender charges are in the policy that's gonna eat up my cash value inside my policy, which by the way, it's true, in the early years of a life insurance policy. It means that the first 15 years of a permanent life insurance policy, I'm talking about whole life, universal life, index universal life, and the very sophisticated and very risky variable universal life, which you need a uh, uh, investment uh, a comb to go through because you could lose money inside a variable universal life uh, policy. 
But if you're looking at surrender charges, generally in the first to 15 years of the policy, there's what they call surrender charges on a policy, which isn't actually charges that takes money from your policy, theoretically. The only way these surrender charges get actually applied is if you cancel the policy early during the surrender charge period. So in other words, you have 15 years of surrender charges on a policy and you decide to cancel the policy in the seventh year. Well, first of all, you no longer have any life insurance. Second of all, the life insurance company is going to enforce these surrender charges. In other words, let's say you got $10,000 and you have a, you have a surrender charge on a policy, let's say of a uh, 10%. So if $10,000 in a policy, you cancel the policy, the insurance company is not only gonna cancel your death benefit and your, life, your living benefits from the policy, you'll no longer, no longer have coverage. In other words, you died, not, nothing is gonna be paid from the insurance company to your beneficiary. And secondly, they're going to enforce a surrender charge, meaning that if you have $10,000 in a policy, in an example, a 10% surrender charge, they're also gonna take $1,000 from the cash value, your money, and the insurance company is gonna keep that. However, if you have the policy in force after the surrender charge period, let's say after the 15th year, and you decide to cancel the policy, well, you'll still have no coverage, but all that money inside the policy, that cash value, 100% of it is yours. Now, here's a danger you're going to face. If you cancel this policy and you have cash value, sure, the policy ben benefits are no longer there, there's no more living benefits, there's no more death benefits. However, you'll have your cash. And if it's after the surrender charge period, let's say you got $20,000 in cash. Okay, you get a $20,000 cash value that's gonna be sent to you. However, here's what you also receive. Income tax bill from the IRS. In other words, whatever you put in there, whatever premiums you've contributed into the policy, that's not gonna be taxed. However, the gains that you had inside the policy, now that will be taxed based on ordinary income, not capital gains, based on ordinary income. Let's say in that example, you got $20,000 added to, you put uh, uh, $10,000 into the policy and $10,000 of gain. Well, that $10,000 of gain, now you'll be taxed on that $10,000 of gain as ordinary income. So you, let's say you're making $100,000 a year, add that $10,000 from the life insurance policy, and now you're being taxed at $110,000 per year. So in other words, if you're buying a life insurance policy, make sure it's a premium that you can afford to pay for a good portion of your life. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Make sure that's a premium that you can afford to pay for that time frame. Fourth danger when buying a life insurance policy. You just might not get one. What am I talking about? Just because you can afford to pay the monthly premium doesn't mean the insurance company will issue a policy. How come? Well, first of all, there are health conditions that people may deal with. For example, you dealt with a heart attack, stroke, cancer, and you didn't have a life insurance policy to, be, to, to start with. But let's say you had cancer a year ago, or a heart attack three years ago, or, or, or a stroke you know, seven years ago. The insurance company is gonna look retroactively into your health records to see how your health has been since that heart attack, stroke, or cancer, or major health challenge that you've experienced. Or worst case scenario, you have a job that precludes you from getting a life insurance policy. We deal with a lot of athletes, we deal a lot with people in professional sports and entertainment. Sometimes in their life, based on their occupation, whether they're a deep sea water welding or professional uh, athlete, MMA fighter or boxer, they might not be able to get a policy because of their dangerous occupation where their life is on the line. If there's certain prescription drugs, that's why we gotta be careful these days of what your doctor wants to prescribe you for your mental health because yes, you might have a drug for your mental health. The problem with that is, guess what the life insurance companies think? You are a risk. We may not want to insure it. It's not a judgment on you. Life insurance companies are experts at managing risk. They don't want to take anybody's business. They don't want to take your premiums. If they feel that in the next three, four, five, ten years, in the early years of the policy, they have a risk of paying your beneficiaries a large amount of money, check with your properly trained life insurance agent about those details. Danger number five about buying life insurance is not having money conversations sooner than later. Give you a couple of reasons. I have older parents. I bought a policy for them 21 years ago without ever thinking in a million years that my father one day would need some long-term care, that my father one day, his, his brain, his mind might start slipping, that uh, he may not be able to walk. Because my dad was a man's man when I was growing up. And today, my dad walks with a cane. So I want to make sure that instead of digging into my pocket while I'm trying to raise my own children while building my business, even if I could attend to them, I'm not so sure if I could treat them the way a medical professional would treat them with the care and the professionalism and the awareness 
of what the situation they're going through. I don't know. I'm just a son. I'm biased. I may not make the right medical decision because I'm not a medical professional. That's why I have insurance to provide the financial resources to hire the people for that type of medical or long-term care. Same thing too with wealth transfer. We had a major real estate investor in, in California say, listen, if something were to happen to me, my two boys would have to pay $21 million in estate tax, debt tax, in case something were to happen to me. So they have to sell half the real estate portfolio that he spent his entire lifetime building just to pay the death tax that the government imposes when you pass. It's called estate tax. Well, by repositioning money from a money market account from one financial pocket to another financial pocket of insurance, $2 million here, over to here, boom. Next thing you know, it turned into a $23 million tax-free death benefit in case something were to happen to him. The money gets put into the trust. The trust then pays the death tax, the estate tax. And guess what happens to the properties? Nothing. Stays intact. Wealth is transferred from one generation to another without paying a dime in tax and making smarter use of money that was otherwise sitting in a money market account, making smarter use of it, leveraging inside a life insurance policy to provide tax-free wealth transfer to the next generation. Funeral expenses is another situation where you're not having money conversations. Who's gonna be arguing at the funeral? Siblings gonna be arguing. Fastest way to separate a family is arguing who's gonna pay for mom and dad's funeral. You didn't pay enough, you didn't pay. You Growing up, you didn't do this. You know what, I busted my tail, we gotta put a car wash together, a bake sale together, raise money for the funeral. You didn't even contribute, you weren't even here. Fastest way to divide siblings for the rest of their lives is arguing over how mom and dad are buried with dignity and honor or lack thereof. So again, the danger of buying life insurance or not buying life insurance is not having a conversation. Fastest way to solve this problem, Consider a final expense life insurance policy. Talk to your agent about it. A final expense insurance is fairly inexpensive to make sure that the siblings contribute to, with a monthly premium that's affordable to all two of you or three of you or five of you, whoever case may be. So therefore, when mom and dad pass away, and it will come, sadly, that they can be buried with dignity, the bill can be paid with honor, and therefore the celebration of life is full in force at the funeral versus the back of everybody's mind is how we're gonna pay for this thing, how we're gonna pay for this thing. It's no longer there. You've eliminated that concern. You can honor and celebrate the deceased family member at their funeral. How about retirement? A lot of people often think that life insurance is all just for dying. What about protecting your money from Uncle Sam and income taxes? from cousin California and cousin Illinois and cousin New York and, and state income taxes. Well, there's ways you can use life insurance to make sure you're playing for retirement without paying a dime in tax for the rest of your life. Again, the danger of not doing so is you're getting whacked in taxes unnecessarily, but if you were informed, you were educated, and you had conversation about it, understand what exclusions and limitations you had, had to eliminate those, so therefore you can have more of your money in your pocket for you for the rest of your life. The other aspect here is future opportunities. Bottom line here, anybody tells you that you should buy this type of life insurance or this type of life insurance or one policy covers all needs, here's the bottom line, check this out. Different life scenarios require different needs that lead to specific solutions and tools. In the world of life insurance, in my opinion, doing this for the last 24 years, there's not one policy that covers every need for everybody for every life situation. The moment somebody tells you one life insurance policy solves all, they are wrong in my professional opinion. They're morally and ethically wrong because there's multiple life scenarios that require multiple different products. And these days, these life insurance companies are prepared to partner together with you to make sure you avoid the dangers of life from a financial standpoint. That being said, let me know your thoughts, your questions, your comments, feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Please put it in the comment section. You have something to add? Another danger? Another life scenario you'd like to add? Please put it in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel. We thank you for crossing over 300,000 subs. Appreciate you for the support. We look forward to creating more content like this. If there's future content you'd like for us to produce, again, please put it in the comment section below. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue love smart and be money smart today.